So I know I'm really late to the ball on this, but I just got out of Avengers Endgame. Everything lined up perfectly for me, and I was able to go see it with uh, <laughs> having the least impact on the least amount of people. Um, you know, I got my overtime, uh, everybody's happy, and uh, I got to sit down and enjoy the movie. Now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say, first of all, I loved it. This is less of a review and more of a conversation with myself sparked by watching the movie, thinking about the movie, and really the aftermath of everything in the movie. And I, this is going to be a spoiler free, uh, like I said, just a little talk, a little chat. Um, it, the movie is a jumping off point for me, so that's all it is. You don't have to worry if you haven't seen it yet or if you want to see it. And maybe I can, I can sell it this way and maybe even title the episode or the video this. This is why you should go see Avengers Endgame right now if you haven't seen it. And I'll start off not talking about the movie, I'm going to talk about myself. I have for years had an aversion to comics, even though I loved them. Uh, let me put it this way, I started off with Batman the Animated Series, Ninja Turtles cartoon, Spider-Man cartoon. Why? Because I couldn't read, folks. Yes, I was illiterate for years, for like the first five years of my life. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so gang, what happened was I learned to read very, I remember very difficult struggles reading uh, my dad trying to teach me to read with Curious George books. Nothing wrong with Curious George, but when I was like 11, maybe, and I uh, stumbled across uh, comics, uh, graphic novels and such in the bookstore, I was drawn to, for whatever reason, maybe because I like Magneto's design, uh, the Onslaught series of, I was going to say Tonka Bonds, I'm such a weeb man, um, <laughs> the Onslaught series of graphic novels that were collected there. Or trade paperbacks really is what they are. They're not graphic novels. Anyway, doesn't matter. I looked at those. I got exposed again to Spider-Man in them. I don't know if I'd ever read a Spider-Man comic before. You know, I remember going to 7-Elevens as a kid. There was one that my sister and I would walk from our, our school uh, to home, wherever home was at the time. And uh, we would stop by this 7-Eleven that was right down the street from our school, get Slurpees every now and then. And I would buy a loose comic book every now and then. It just kind of enjoy that experience. Um, I think I bought a couple X-Men. Again, the X-Men cartoon was also a cool thing that I got to experience as a kid. Um, but, uh, and maybe a Spider-Man or two, because I always liked Spider-Man. Uh, and also, I got exposed to comics with my dad's old comic books. He had huge, they had these, I don't know if they were the king size ones, but they were like 18 inches tall by, you know, 9 inches wide or 11 inches wide or something like that. And I remember one with Black Panther that was super cool. And there was all these great memories that I have before I could even read really and I would just look through the stuff because it was cool there's cool pictures it's a visual medium it draws you in with uh, what it shows you and something interesting about comic books that is a strength and a weakness I'm now realizing or or maybe to my perception is changing is that if you pick up a single issue a floppy and it's a self-contained story you can enjoy that thing you can love it you can be blown away you could be, I don't know, thrilled and moved to feeling all sorts of feelings, right? Even tears, like me in Avengers, like 10 minutes in and then uh, every half hour or so uh, through the three hour long experience. Um, but if you know more, there's, there's a saying that uh, somebody has uh, just enough knowledge to be dangerous. And uh, I've always thought that was a funny phrase, especially when used of other people, but I realized that I should have been, that phrase um, regards me in the way I have thought about American comic books, cape comics as they call them. Uh, I really enjoy uh, what I saw from X-Men, what I saw from Spider-Man, what I saw from Batman because, well, Batman was more episodic and Bruce never really changed as far as I knew. Uh, Batman Beyond, on the other hand, was fantastic for the reason that uh, Terry McGinnis got to grow and change and develop as a character, I felt. Um, even though, honestly, his episode, his show probably is more episodic. But I think it has a little more serialization to it than the original Batman the Animated Series. Regardless, I love stories because I love to be able to see characters change, and I love how they transform over time. And in comic books, I became aware at some point when I was like a young teen that in comic books, nothing really matters because everything is always changing. Everything can always be reset. Um... I even uh, eight years ago, uh, the death of Batman happened, and I bought all these Bat Family books uh, that were related to it because it was so interesting to me that Batman could die. And 
uh, here's something funny. For my grandfather, I have these sealed copies of The Death of Superman. I don't know if they're original run or not, but I have them somewhere. And uh, I appreciate having those. And I thought, you know, Superman died. I know he came back. Batman died. I don't know how he's going to come back. And especially because they've there's only there can only be one Superman. So I can understand why you would need to bring him back the way they did, which I honestly don't even know how they did, but they did somehow. But then DC reset with all these infinite crises on Earth over and over again and stuff, right? Um, I, I don't. I barely know anything about DC. Okay, I will admit that. But I went ahead and bought those you know Bat Family books the uh, regarding his death and. I think I quit when I <laughs> got to the end of an issue and there was a thing uh, that showed me that somehow Bruce Wayne was going to come back. And I pretty much said at that point, no thank you. So gently steering myself back towards the overall point I'm making, what I'm saying is that I have learned this movie, ha I mean really, I was coming to that acceptance before, but this movie really cemented to me that you know what, I just have to look at these things these comic books and enjoy them as runs uh, <laughs> not like the runs but as in oh this is a uh, so-and-so's run of this comic book uh, a certain creative team has the helm directing stories about this character and it doesn't really matter what uh, crossover things uh, it doesn't matter what continuity issues there might be. What matters is the story that the creatives are telling at the time on any one particular subject or topic. Now, the Catch-22, if I think I'm probably using that wrong, uh, the Catch-22 for me is that with comic books, with the Marvel Universe, you feel like it's supposed to be one universe. An early complaint about a lot of the Marvel movies was, hey, where are the so-and-so people when this guy's having his adventure? But I think, honestly, and I, it's a legitimate critique, but at the same time, I think most Marvel movies, the main action takes place over the course of like a couple days, like maybe three days a week at the most, and I, I honestly think less than that. Uh, and there's little, um, you know, sometimes a, a villain's plot has been going on for years and they've been coordinating stuff, but it's been very much uh, secret and quiet and uh, things like that. So uh, anyway, the the idea of accepting the things as they come, accepting each comic book as it comes and acknowledging, like having the knowledge and the foresight and the maturity to accept the fact that this is a work of fiction being done by a particular set of people for a particular purpose which should be selling comic books. Uh, I think that's typically the idea, right? Isn't that what you want for your business? Anyway, um, is they're trying to tell a story to sell the comic, which is the thing I love about art because uh, art can be beautiful, it can be personal. I, cr well, like I said already, I cried a bunch of times in the movie. Um, but you can also sell it and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but that's not my point. My point is that the movie offered a view on things that made me have different points of view. It, it made me acknowledge that there are different perspectives, especially um, there was a couple scenes where you got to, like they showed you specifically, there are people in this region, there are people in that region, there are people over there, and these are people from all over the world uh, kind of getting on the same page with each other or whatever, uniting for a certain purpose and, or gathering for a certain purpose is what I really mean. And it made me think, you know what, each one of these characters represents a book or not a book, really. that's not what I was thinking. I was thinking each set of characters or ca individual character represents their own set of stories because we all have our own stories. We all live out our own stories. And the great thing about Endgame and the great thing about uh, comic books having runs under certain creators is the fact that if you can accept that, uh, you will benefit from knowing that what you're watching is a story unfolding that has a certain point. Now you may not like the point reached by the end of it and really you have to, you can't just go into a new run, a relaunch, a reset of a character and hold on to the things from the past, but that's okay because if you can let go of those things, if you can let go of the past um, and accept the present for what it is, whether it be a serialized story being told or whether it's uh, an individual, like a one-shot story being told. If you can just be in the moment and accept that and uh, let it entertain you, or, or you know, if it's entertaining, let it entertain you, uh, I think you will benefit greatly from that. So 
I guess what I'm saying is for years I've been hung up on Western comics uh, because they reset, because they have the ability to transform, and because they go on forever. But the benefit of that is that when you know that it goes on forever, and you know that from time to time it changes, that empowers you, if you're wise enough, which I haven't been for so long, to take the changes as they come and to accept them for what they are, uh, infallible representations of these characters that uh, the people behind them are, are working so hard, hopefully, to make it meaningful and to make it worth your while that you can just enjoy. Um, just as a, as a last thing, uh, I don't know about Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, I've seen them in the other Avenger movie or in uh, whatever it's called, Infinity War. Uh, I haven't watched uh, any of those. I have no interest in Guardians of the Galaxy, really. And I felt like there was one or two other characters referenced I didn't really know. But for every character I did know who had something serious, emotional happen to them, it mattered. There was weight to it, there was stakes because I have a familiarity. And even with the Guardians of the Galaxy characters, because I have a glancing familiarity with them, uh, because I've been introduced to them, I accept, uh, and, and, and because it was well played by the actors and you know the setting and whatever was great too, um, I could see the stakes, I could see the emotional stakes really is what matters here, that's what I'm talking about. And I could see why it mattered to those characters, and I was able to sympathize with them, and feel with them, and be transported, transformed, uh, while sitting in that seat watching this movie. And uh, I guess that's all I really wanted to say, is, like, Avengers Endgame is everything right about comic books, and it's a reason to watch comics. And honestly, I, this is slightly spoilery, but I don't think it really is, if because I'm not going to give any details. It feels like the end of an era, it feels like the end of a run and like it's leaving things open for the beginning of another run of comics under different creatives who uh, have a different goal and who will be telling different stories, I think. And creators should continue to tell, tell different stories. Now, uh, I for years was prejudiced against uh, comics because I preferred uh, anime and manga, which have shorter runs. Uh, usually, usually they have shorter runs. Something you can wrap your head around uh, a lot more easily. And they strive to be consistent within themselves and whether they run for 12 episodes, 50 episodes, or you know, 100, uh, 120 episodes or whatever, they are all trying to tell a single narrative and that's something I uh, think is laudable and something I think is good and I think my preference, I let my preference for that cloud um, my judgment of these comics. Like I've been saying and I'm beginning to belabor myself so I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this. You can like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can get notifications whenever I release something else. I talk about a lot of stuff on this channel. I talk about anime, tokusatsu, comic books. Uh, I love Star Wars in particular. And uh, anyway, uh, if you want to see more of my work, it's over at mjmunoz.com. I'm also documenting myself uh, trying to lose weight, get fitter, be more like Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a joke from the movie, so if you've seen it, you'll know. Uh, you can also support me at coffee.com slash mjmunoz if you want to help enable me to do more stuff, buy more stuff, and uh, watch more stuff and review it. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, yeah, take care, folks.